if I set this to screen, you'll notice that the background is still kind of there. Now this is just for experiment here. I'm going to blow this up. Stick that so that, that part's in the center here. And uh, crank up the levels down up the black. There I got, and now I've got like this weird, bizarre red, like fire pillar or something going on. Um, now that's kind of a cool effect because you got this black and white piece and you've got this one streak of color and um, this streak of color is, is, is more powerful when you've got, when there's nothing else really to distract from it. But I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in there or not. Um, we'll see. I'm just going to keep it in the file, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in there. Let's uh, see what other textures we've got in here. Um, yeah. Now, I think I'm done with getting the grunge going on here. I think it's a little too grungy right now, to be honest. But I'm going to take this and color it. Yay. Something that was big enough to fill the screen. I don't have to resize it. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm really going to experiment with my layer modes here. Now, I set this layer to color, which is going to basically color the layers underneath it in the, in the way that this, in the way that it is, like, right here. So these purples and blues, it's going to, that's the way it's going to color the background. Um, you know, I can set it to multiply, and, uh, it really gets, it really saturates everything, or even color burn, but I uh, eh, don't like that too much. Soft light um, adds just a subtle, subtle bit, bits of texture, mostly to the, the darker parts, but um, I think we might go with color. Well, it's one of those things that you kind of have to just use your eye and uh, figure it out. That was kind of cool, but uh, linear dodge is kind of cool, but uh, not the effect really the effect I want. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure yet. Let's, uh, I feel like soft light is probably <laughs> what I was going to go with, but, but, uh, okay, let's make this one invisible first, and I'm going to do some, what I like, I like to do this whenever I'm kind of vin vintage-izing something, is I do, like, a global color tweak here. I'm going to pick, like, a dark, saturated, bluish bluish purple maybe and uh, fill the whole screen with that set this to lighten okay now you'll see what that did is it took all the darks and it's going to color them with this purple color and I'm gonna take the complement of that purple yellowish some sort of yellow cream going to fill the entire space with that and set it to multiply now this, this will take all the yellows, or all, I mean, all the whites, and make them yellow. So you'll see without this, it looks grayscale like that. And this gets a little bit more close to the, to like a vintage vibe going, I've got going on. I'm uh, going to reduce the, reduce these a little bit. So they're not so um, prominent. And now you'll notice that like this this layer that I, this color green I've got going on um, from the texture is going to be affected by what I'm doing with this vintage color. So for instance, if I uh, it's going to kind of mute it down a little bit. So 
So I'm basically yellow izing everything, yellow ifying, giving everything a yellow color. Um, so what I might do with this, let's adjust the hue and saturation and see what we get. This is that crazy textured color blend we've got going on. Um, I'm not, this is uh, just an experiment, but uh, Just looking for some subtle color. Maybe if I increase the contrast to this thing. That is cool, but it might be a little too much. See this like weird fade here? It might be because of this. Well, no, that's actually the background of the. It's actually the background of my texture here. Okay. Um, So what I'm going for is sort of, sort of like a leak, and you know I might, I might not be a fan of the way it's affecting my frame here. So you know, to be honest, I'm not sure how much color I really want in here. I think I would just want a global color, maybe like just just that much, or even less, because I want it to still maintain a, a black and white vibe. But uh, this one keeps it black and white. Let me try inverting it. Oh, there we go. That's actually pretty sweet. So uh, by inverting it, it's got a red and yellow going on. And I'm going to flip this horizontal. Okay. I flipped that so the yellow is more on top. Yeah, I'm actually kind of digging that. I like the red, the dark, the darkness of it. And, uh, it's Okay, we're gonna go with that. And uh, yeah, why not? I'll keep this red, this red burst of light going on through here. I think it's pretty cool. Now, now that we've got our color essentially done, I'm gonna save again. And then, well, let's just see. Um, I'm gonna do some final finishing effects, and then we'll be wrapping this thing up already looking cool, but we're just going to do a couple more subtle, subtle things to do with it. Um, okay, we've got this thing going on. Now what I might want to do is take the text that we've created, and right now it's probably pretty sharp in comparison to the rest of the buzzy grain background and everything. So I might just like, I'm going to stick this in a group, copy, duplicate it, stick it in a group, and say type originals. Now I'm going to merge all these layers together and I get one, one layer that is the type all rasterized. And where, is, where are my lines? Here we go. Um, Stick that in the Tech Originals folder, merge this, and merge it with that. So here is this little segment of type I've got. Now I'm going to add noise to here. And uh, desaturate it. Okay. I'm gonna did I add the noise? Did it work? Um, yes, okay. So you see the noise was added. I'm going to blur it. 
one point or zero point five maybe. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a sh smart sharpen. Smart sharpen is cool, especially after you've blurred something, because um, you're kind of boosting the contrast and kind of adding this grain to it at the same time. It, it like melts the edges together. So you can see my originals, the lines all like that, and then the new ones, it's kind of a, like it's been, like the ink has bleed, has been, has bled across the page. And I'm also gonna take some, uh, I think I've got some brushes installed. Do I have brushes? Uh, no. But uh, I think I do have brushes in my resources here. this dust and grungy brushes. I'm going to see what this is. So, who made these brushes? Uh, Buffy Mars from DeviantArt. Um, so, I've, let me load those brushes. I just dragged them into Photoshop. And, no, they're not there. So, I'm going to find them see what I got with them. Okay. Um, no, they're probably down here. Okay. Looks like these are... Okay, yeah, they're, they're really small and they're kind of... not what I'm looking for here. Yeah, I was um, going to do a little bit of distressing on these, but uh, I've decided, nope, I'm not going to do that. It's going to add some distressing to it, but anyway, I'm going to take some of these sections here of my text and my, my typography and just select parts and blur parts. Um, select modify feather. pixels. Now I'm just gonna, this is just to give a little bit more natural kind of artistic effect going on. I think this is just a purely uh, crazy visual technique that I like. Blur this again. Sort of like a focus pull in a way, but uh, and blur that. Okay. Now I might just go blah 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 and select a bunch there. Feather this one. Um, select modify feather. Image adjust. Um, color balance. Now you'll see I'm adjusting the color just for the specific selection here I've got. And I might, you know, I can bust it down to red like that. I think that's kind of cool actually. So this just like this, it fades into this different color. A little bit more natural, like it's sort of aged. Do the same thing over here. Feather and feather. Pixels, image, adjust, color, balance. Then let's see, what if I went to green? Purples. Yeah, okay. And I'll give this an, an overall small Gaussian border of like one, three. Okay, and then I'm going to sharpen everything again. Not so much, not that much. This is just to help fight the blur that I did a little bit. Um, 
I guess that probably doesn't really make any sense. But you'll see that my letters somewhat fit in a little bit more with it. And I can even set it to screen so it takes up some of those, the texture that's behind it. And you'll see it's got like, see this tape line? It's right up top there. I noticed that. Um, I thought I had a problem with it not being matched up with this line that I created, but actually I don't even care because I think it's kind of cool. Alright, um, one final thing. I like the control A. That's the cool technique. Um, edit, copy, merged. Go to the very top, paste. And we're going to do a high pass filter on this. Actually, what we'll do, how will we? Yeah, okay. Filter, other, high pass. This is going to boost the contrast. Um, I just leave it as a default. Okay, set this to hard light. Now, this is way too extreme. So, if you go down to zero, this is what it looked like. But this is just an overall sharpening. No, not yet. I'm gonna, you know, paste that merge layer back in there. I'm gonna do some lighting effects. I'm gonna give this whole thing a just a global unification of the light. And. making it an omni. Okay. So you'll see I've kind of got like a... it's pulled into the center. And I will tone that down just a tad. Edit, fade, lighting effects. Okay. And we'll go... let's see, what would a vignette look like? I, I kind of want to put a subtle vignette on this. So if you go to Distort, Lens Correction, you'll see a vignette. You can go all the way down here and it's going to create a vignette on it. But what I don't like is how it, it, it creates it on this, uh, what I've got a frame here. So I'm not going to do too much. Just ever so slightly. Mm. Okay, having done that, I don't really like what it looks like on that frame, so I'm just going to keep it like this. And, uh, yeah, okay. Just seeing what it would look like underneath those layers. Okay, well, I think that I'm actually pretty much done here. Um, do I need to go back in and boost that contrast of that line? Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, I forgot to adjust the line work to match the color. Um, that's probably a good idea, because since I did that with a type, I'll go ahead and uh, do my noise blur trick. Um, noise, add noise. So this is the, the black line art. So I'm just like adding some noise to it, and I'm going to blur it and then sharpen that. Let me zoom in where you can see. Sharpen, smart sharpen. Okay. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay. Now I think that makes the line work kind of fit in more with, with everything. It kind of fuzzes it out, adds a little grain texture to it. And what I'll do with this, since this I, I did some spot blurring on here, I think I'll go ahead and do that with the artwork. So I'm going to copy that artwork and merge it. Okay, and this is what we've got. Um, I'm going to spot spot blur again. Uh, so I kind of want the focus to be pulled here. So what I might do is just like select around here. 
um, inverse, select the inverse, and then feather that, maybe like 75 pixels, and then blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, maybe like 1.5, just for a subtle effect of a, of a, of a focus pool. You'll see that it's quite nice and blurry down through here. It looks like it matches in with the background. I like that. And then it's a little bit sharper up here. All right, well, okay. Now let's, now let's officially select all. Edit, copy, merged. You know, when you're doing this, you never can quite want to let it go sometimes. You just want to keep going. But uh, there comes a time when you want to stop, or you need to stop. And uh, I believe that time is now. But essentially, you've learned everything that we've we've covered in here. You're just gonna watch me sit here and experiment with stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I copied merged here. Um, go ahead and do another high pass. So let's see how that looks when I zoom in. Sort of boosts the contrast. One thing I like about the high pass filter is it kind of puts a halo, small halo of like light underneath. You'll see that like, you see how it puts that like halo there? That's something that like aged, um, like books and prints, they have that characteristic. But I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to over sharpen this thing. Alright, well, looks like this is it. This is what we got. We've got our album cover. Some, some kind of classic typography here. Beauty is a black hole. Is everything spelled okay? I'd rather be eaten by them than this. Volume 001. So there you've got it. I, what I've taught you um, is how to use your Wacom illustration uh, techniques um, and photo manipulation skills together in Photoshop to create a cool album artwork. Uh, you find stock photography that you like and take a little bit of your own photography, mix it together in Photoshop, create yourself a composition, and then and, and use your illustration and your creativity to to just embellish upon it. You know, sometimes people call it tracing, but um, in reality, like I could draw this if I wanted to, if I wanted to draw it completely from scratch. But I mean, I'm going for a particular look. Um, so I think it's best that I that I like to do it this way. I like to draw over top of the photo because I'm going for a more like realistic look. That's it's like a photograph that's illustrated. That's yeah, it's all in proportion to each other, and, um, and plus it's faster for me sometimes. And uh, you'll you'll find that it's faster too. But uh, feel free to draw anything that you've got if you want to draw it completely from scratch. But uh, I'm not I'm not uh, afraid to use reference material like this. Um, but if you're going to use stock. Uh, make sure you credit the person so they so they know what it is that you're doing with their work. I think it's always cool for them to know that. But So just to recap again, you've learned how to photo manipulate. You've learned how to take stock photography, put it together, use your Wacom tablet and illustrate over top, you know, uh, create interesting line work. Then mess with textures and coloring to get a vintage album cover look. Uh, I think it looks pretty hardcore. And... Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, email me, jeff at gomedia.us, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Hope you liked it.